Hey everyone, Sin here. Today we're going to do some engineering and stuff. In this video, we're going to follow on from my previous video on how to set up ESP Link to send and receive serial data over Wi Fi. So if you haven't already seen that video, I'll link it on screen and down below. My original goal for setting up ESP Link was so I could see if I could run Lynx firmware on the Arduino Uno over Wi Fi. My logic was if LabVIEW sees a virtual COM port, it should be no different than if I had the USB connected to the Arduino. I proved this in concept in the last video, however in this video we will see if this actually works in LabVIEW. Picking up from where we left off in the last video, I have ESP Link running on the ESP-01, which is connected to my Arduino Uno, which has the Lynx firmware loaded. I also have a virtual COM port open on the COM10 through the hardware virtual serial port program. Let's launch a lab view to see if we can run an example VI on the Arduino Uno over Wi-Fi. With lab view open, let's locate the Lynx Blink VI example. In order to do this, navigate to help, find examples. Once the NI example finder launches, navigate to the search tab and type Lynx. When it shows up, double click on it to load the examples. Now we see in the middle pane all the Lynx examples are loaded. Let's open the Lynx Blink Simple VI by double clicking on it. Once it opens, I'll change the serial port to COM10, the virtual COM port we set up previously. And that's it. Let's hit run and see if it works. Unfortunately, as you can see, it doesn't. We are getting the 5003 error, which means serial communications between LabVIEW and the Arduino is timing out. I've done a lot of deep diving into why this occurs, but it is outside the scope of the video. If you have any ideas or want to comment on why you think it doesn't work, leave a comment down below or head onto the NI forms and visit my post. However, in summary, what I have found is the Lynx firmware is constantly monitoring the RX and TX pins of the Arduino for Lynx commands. This works great when you run the Arduino through USB, However, as soon as you connect anything on the RX or TX pins of the Arduino Uno, it will cause a timeout in LabVIEW. So unfortunately, in this case, running Lynx on an Arduino Uno over Wi-Fi is a no-go. That's not the end of the story, however, as we could also try something like an Arduino Mega, which has additional UART pins. Additionally, that doesn't mean we can't read serial data in LabVIEW directly from the Arduino Uno over Wi-Fi. Because ESP Link is acting as a transparent serial bridge, it means we should still be able to send and receive serial data from the Arduino in LabVIEW directly. If we open up the example finder again and type in serial and double click it, a number of serial communication examples are shown. Let's open the serial simple VI and see if we read some serial data from the Arduino over Wi Fi. First, let's save this example VI as we'll be modifying it later. You want to click the save as and not save function, as if you make any modifications to an example, you don't want to overwrite the original example file. Once you're prompted to save, choose the copy substitute option. This will save a new VI on your hard drive, close the example VI and keep your new version open. That way, any changes we make won't affect the original example VI. Using example VIs as the base for your LabVIEW projects can be a great way to learn and save time. Now that's saved, let's select COM10 again and run the VI to see if we get any data from the Arduino. When I run the VI, we can see that the serial data is being transmitted as indicated on the hardware virtual serial port program. But we're not getting any response back because the Lynx firmware is seeing this as gibberish. To get anything useful out of this, we will have to upload our own code to the Arduino to handle our own serial commands and do something useful. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use and slightly modify the Arduino Switch Case 2 example. All this code does is monitor the serial input and turn on an LED based on the case selected. I'll replicate the schematic as shown on the example page, which is linked on screen. The case selection occurs if the character received is either A, B, C, D, or E. So we have five cases in total. It will then drive the corresponding LED associated with that case. 
If no case is selected, the default case will drive all the LEDs low. So if I send these characters through the simple serial VI, I should be able to turn these LEDs on and off. I also added some debug statements to each case in my code to output via the serial console the case we enter. This is a great trick to work out if you're entering your cases properly. So let's upload this code to the Arduino and test it out before we move on to LabVIEW. Once the code is uploaded, let's open the serial monitor and try typing in the different cases to see if we get an output back on the serial monitor. And as you can see, we do. So let's build the circuit and get back to the simple serial VI in LabVIEW. Now that we have made the additional electrical connections for the LEDs, let's modify the simple serial VI to allow us to send the appropriate serial characters to the Arduino. If we open the block diagram by pressing Ctrl E, we can see how this example works. On the left we have our controls. Serial settings is a type diff which is a custom control cluster containing all the serial setting values. Visa resource name just specifies the resource to open, read and write to, in our case this is COM10. Delay before read is feeding the wait function in the sequence structure. This is just forcing our VI to wait after the visa write function occurs for a specified period of time, so as not to cause premature timeout. Just notice the visa reference and error cluster are also wired to the sequence structure. This is for flow control as if you don't do it, the sequence structure will execute in parallel to the other functions, which in this case would defeat the purpose of the sequence structure. Moving on to the visa configure serial port function, this just initializes the serial communications to your device. We will be leaving this as the default settings as in the example, however we will just change the baud rate to 115200 in the serial setting control. Next the visa write function will write a command string to your device. We are going to change this constant to a control, so right click it and select change to control. Next the visa read function will read a number of bytes specified from the visa resource and output it to the read buffer. Note you have to specify the number of bytes that you want to read. If you don't do it properly, you will not read all the available data being sent by your device. Here the example is using a property node to return the number of bytes available at the serial port to determine this automatically. This doesn't always work, so when you set up your own serial communications, it is wise to enable a termination character of some sort. This way your code will know when the end of the message occurs, so you won't miss out on any data. Lastly, the VI close function just closes out the reference to your serial device so it is not tied up later. Now let's just clean up the VI and test it out.
Okay, now that I have the VI a bit more presentable and compact, let's test it. I have ESP Link running on the ESP-01, which is connected to the RX and TX pins of the Arduino. COM10 is set up as a virtual COM port, and the VI is ready to go. I'll type out each case, then a combination of cases, and you can see the output on the screen. Just note, because we have the delay of 500 milliseconds in there, it will hold the LED high for that amount of time. That's why it wasn't necessary in this case to use a while loop for this basic example. If you decide to put in a while loop, make sure you're able to toggle the write function. Otherwise, you'll continue to write the command to the Arduino every 500 milliseconds or whatever your delay amount is. And as you can see, we are able to drive each LED for its corresponding case as well as read the serial data in LabVIEW and on the microcontroller console of ESP Link. And that's it, I've demonstrated you can send and receive serial data from your Arduino over Wi-Fi in LabVIEW without links. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next part.